my busy. job on top of it. Yeah. Yeah, job too. yeah I, I give you credit on that. I admire that. The fact that you guys, especially those that are, of you that are striving to get involved in something like that, you know, to do that while my you're doing school. Of it, yeah. yeah well, that's got to be challenging. I mean, I'm setting up the YouTube live stream right now. So, so I'm going to start sharing that out on the social media platforms. And then after I get this shared, Andrew, I'll send you the link. Sounds good. Robbie, glad you can make it. If you can hear me. Oh, you're welcome. I was trying to type some school stuff there. That's all cool. I'm getting ready to put this on. I'll go ahead and tag you guys in this too. If you wanted to retweet or anything like that. All right. I just shared it on Twitter. Tag you guys. Almost. I think Twitter's doing something a little different now because whenever you try to retweet, you have to comment. <laughs> you can't just like <laughs> generally retweet it anymore. Oh, interesting. Like they make you have to retweet comment. Uh, at least on my end, anyone on my computer. Let me see like, if it makes me. But uh, I, it says I can retweet or quote tweet. So that's weird. There might be something different with mine. I don't know. Strange. Yeah, I just retweeted. It worked. It worked okay. on my phone just retweeting. Okay, that's cool. Maybe it's different on my phone. I haven't tried on my phone, but or it might be something with my settings. Maybe. Anyways, I got that on Twitter. I'm gonna I'm getting ready to pop over and copy and paste it on Facebook. I'll drop this in some of the fan groups. Okay, I'm gonna tag you guys in this one too. I don't know if they'll let me tag you or not, Andrew, but I'll go ahead and try. Okay, it did let me. I'm gonna edit that real quick. Okay, save it. Well, since I'm setting this up real quick, for anybody that's on the YouTube channel already, or again, you're catching the kind of the pregame before the show actually starts, I'm just kind of sharing the links out there for everybody to give people a chance to kind of roll in so you haven't technically missed anything yet. Just in case. And that. I'll drop this again. I dropped in one of the fan groups. I'm going to drop it in the... Indiana Hoosier basketball fans and stuff real quick, just in case. Then uh, the last thing I'll do is send that to Andrew and then we should be ready to go. All right, I got that done. I'm just gonna send this to Andrew real quick. Okay, I got that all done. Make sure my volume's on mute. 
Okay. Anyways, uh, for a YouTube audience that might already be jumping in or just having time to jump, jump in real quick, tonight we're going to have our friend Andrew Rood on here from Indiana HQ, and uh, we're getting ready to start the show here shortly. I'm going to do a brief uh, run through the show plan again with you guys real quick, and Robbie and Kathy, I know you guys are familiar with the general format, but uh, usually in segment one, Andrew, we just kind of do the what's new with the crew, where we kind of go around the room and share with what's new with us lately, and, and then uh, we'll also you, have you participate in that as well if you want to. I don't know if you want to share what happened here recently, <laughs> but you're welcome to. We're not going to hold that against you or anything. But uh, uh, anyways, uh, the second segment is, is really giving the listeners a chance to get to know you more for those that might not know you as much yet, Andrew. And then segment three, we're going to start talking about different sports uh, as in football and basketball, uh, mainly the focus tonight. And then uh, the very last segment is closing thoughts, which is where we go around the room and share our thoughts on the episode. Usually us three will go first and then we'll kind of touch base with you, Andrew, just to see what your takeaways are or what the experience was like for you. Uh, other than that, again, this is going live on YouTube. Afterwards, I will be uh, sharing what I would call the high definition version of the show. And then I'll also have this uh, probably about an hour after the show, Andrew, I'll have this on the audio podcast platforms for Spotify because I'll go through there, edit it, and, and add in the intro music and all that later on. Other than that, I'm ready to go, guys. I mean, Andrew looks like he's ready. Robbie, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. All right. There's going to be a brief pause, and then I'll start talking, and then you know when it's, when it's going. Hello, IU fans. Welcome back to a new episode of Hoosier Heartland Podcast. I am Ben Malcolmson, and joining alongside me, as always, is my twin brother, Robbie Malcolmson, and our good friend, Kathy Chong. Thanks, Ben. I just want to welcome our guest back tonight. It's great to be back on the show again, and our guest is from Indiana HQ. We have Andrew Root on tonight. Andrew, great to have you on the show. How does it feel to be your first time on here? Robbie, first of all, um, thanks for everybody getting me on tonight. Uh, really excited to be uh, get a chance to be on your guys' podcast. Um, uh, listen to uh, quite a few episodes before. Um, I know you've had uh, Matt Lukens and um, Noah Freeman, who uh, are part of the Hoosier Sound, who, who are part of our site as well. So, it's really great to be here. Can't wait to talk some IU news. Awesome. Thanks, Andrew. So, let's jump right into our first segment. It's called What's New with the Crew. Um, so what's going on in the world lately for our hosts and our guests? So, Andrew, what we typically do here is we share a recent story through life. So it can be anything that's happy, sad, embarrassing, funny. Um, so we'll go first and then we'll save you for last. Um, I'll go ahead and kick us off. So last week, my Who Who Hail co-host came to visit. I know I talked about that a little bit during our last episode. Um, and I took the last week completely off, like completely unplugged, took the week off work. So it was so great. But I feel like this week is moving at snail's pace because of that. Um, besides that, I am so excited for Big Ten and IU football to start this weekend. I have my countdown going on Instagram. We're at two days and 19 hours, so we are getting closer and closer. Um, I even had my friends schedule like a birthday thing around that. So um, you can tell it's really important to me. And then outside of that, I've just been sending Robbie and Ben Duncan Robinson stuff, but um, that's what's been going on in my life. So Ben, I'll kick it over to you. Well, I'm surprised you didn't include the seconds there in the countdown for the for the big like 24, 23, 22. <laughs> but uh, but anyways, I, 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 I'm, of course, we know the news about uh, your co-host, Jeff, from Who Who Hale was in to visit as well. So it's been an exciting time. I know for me, it's not so much what happened recently. There's some stuff going on in my employment. That I'm actually working on a transition to try to probably go to day shift, most likely in the near future, which for my line of work is kind of a big deal. But it'll, it'll give me a little bit more on a day shift schedule and it'll pre free up opportunities to do more shows throughout the week on Flexible, whether it's on here or on Chapters the other podcasts I started doing recently. But the main news for me it would be uh, what's coming up this weekend. Tonight is the start of my vacation. I don't go back to work till next Tuesday. And then Friday morning, me and my wife are moving, or not moving, <laughs> we're actually uh, taking a vacation to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. So we're going down there, which happens to be like my favorite uh, childhood vacation spot. I don't know 100% sure if Robbie agrees on his end, but I know that's special to me. That's where my wife and I took our honeymoon. Uh, we went recently two years ago, so we're excited to go back, eat a bunch of stuff, uh, go around and see different sights and sounds and see what's new in Gatlinburg. But that's really much for me. Robbie, what about you? Yeah, Ben, I have to 
I disagree on my own point of view on Gatlinburg. I, I do like the way it looks and I like to do the chairlift thing and all that stuff. But when you start going into like the wax museums, and all these places in Pigeon Forge, it's just a huge rip off to me on some of the things that people charge you in those places. It's like $50 for an entrance fee and weird things. I have to admit the Titanic uh, exhibit's actually really cool there. Uh, if you get to go there, so you get to put your hand in like water. It's supposed to be the temperature that the water was for the people. It's terrible. But overall, you know, I, I love there. I've always wanted to get like the cabin up in the hill kind of experience to rent. So I have to do that in the future, Ben, at some point. Other than that, it's just been school. It's been kicking my butt and wearing me out. Trying to do a, an education podcast on top of doing philosophy and this and stuff, but also just teaching class in a virtual way this year. And then, um, you know, I got a weird letter in the mail at school the other day. Apparently, one of my former students last year nominated me for a, a national award. And it said I'd been selected as a, a, like, it was like an NAECP National Educator of Distinguished. So I, I guess they pick a few hundred every year, and they was able to be selected on that. So I felt really lucky to have that notoriety from that student. And then the program that sent me the little, the, the certificate and the mail on, uh, I think it was Tuesday morning when I got that. So I, that, I think that's that's kind of exciting. It's always cool to kind of get little things like that. And especially in a year where I'm going to be trying to move, as Ben and Kathy knows. Andrew, I'm going to try to be coming back up to Hoosier country again and, and get out. Uh, I love the bluegrass state of my experience here, but I think that I, it's a good time to kind of move up towards there. And it's another good thing that I can add to my resume that will look uh, helpful to kind of hopefully get a job up there. But other than that, I know it seems like a lot for – what seems like doing very little, just pretty much the same thing over and over again. And the days just kind of seem like a blur. Uh, and that's what it kind of basically feels. But other than that, things aren't bad. Things are really good. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. Well, I got to say, I, I can tell Kathy's reaction too. She gave you the slow golf clap. Congratulations on there as well. But that, that's huge news, Robbie. And I'm sure Andrew uh, is happy for you as well. I got to say, it's kind of like basically in a nutshell, that's like the badass teacher of the year distinguished honor that you got to have on there, but, but definitely deserving. I've actually had the pleasure of, of going, I've seen video of Robbie teaching. I've had the pleasure of last year going to sit in on his classes and it's a little bit overwhelming at first, but just because how well Robbie controls the class and the level of discussion and dialogue they have in there. They've really come a long way since the days that Robbie and I were in school, back in high school for sure. But Andrew, let's get you involved in this, man. To start off, is there anything new that's going on in your life? Anything happy, sad, funny, extremely embarrassing that you want to share? Well, as of right now, I'm kind of like uh, Robbie and school is kicking my butt as well. Finish uh, in my first semester of senior year here at IU and just finishing up halfway through the semester. And it's been very intense with, um, Zoom classes, the whole virtual landscape, in-person classes half the half the week, Zoom classes, the rest. Um, a lot, a lot of it has been enduring. Um, trying to balance that, uh, my job on campus, um, writing and podcasting for Indiana HQ, but it's it's all worth it in the end. So I really like trusting the process and getting going on that. Um, some news right now. Um, I'm working on getting my officials license for IHSA basketball in the state this year, I've been putting it off for four years now. And I finally sat down and registered, um, joined an association, paid the dues. And now I just have to go take the test, hopefully looking to get that done next weekend. So hopefully I can start referencing some high school, um, high school, middle school games in the state this year. Well, congratulations, Andrew. And that's a great uh, way to introduce you on the show. And, and we talked a little bit about in the pregame, just about how busy of a life that Andrew lives. Again, I, I admire his drive a lot and I have mutual friends of his and also friends of Andrew's that are doing the same thing that are, they're going through school, but they're doing all these things on the side uh, to try to advance their lives and their careers. But that's, that's awesome on the official side, Andrew. It makes me think of hey, ben. Robbie had our friend Mike on recently. He's an yeah. official. Go ahead, Robbie. Well, that's what I was about to say, Ben, because Mike had said something to us that there was, or at least the uh, the feeling was that the culture and, and the refereeing field in Indiana is is much needed. Andrew, do you get that impression yourself, or you and your friends? Uh, do you get the impression that there is a pretty strong demand right now for referees in high school athletics? Oh, absolutely. Um, growing up in Indiana, I played three sports in high school, and. Track, I, did, I threw shot and track, and there wasn't really referees for that. But for football and basketball, there's a huge shortage of uh, referees in the state, whether it's north or south. And a lot of it is um, it's a lot of it is trying to keep the younger generation. A lot of the officials who are currently in the state are much older. 
and God bless them for um, keeping up and um, staying in the game. But a lot of it is just having to do with um, a lot of the on-court uh, confrontations and distractions in the stands with um, parents and um, a lot of oversight on that. So it's very um, tough right now to get a lot of young officials in the state of Indiana. But if I get in there, hopefully everything goes well and I have a, a good start on that path. Well, Andrew, if you, if you want some practice of uh, fans screaming at you for making the wrong call, we can take this whole show, just me, Robbie, and Kathy taking yeah. turns having you the whole time, if you like. Just, every you time that Andrew answers the question, every time Andrew answers the question, Kathy's going to be like, come on! It's just going to be Kathy, like, her reactions to all the Miami Heat games and the conference finals is, God! <laughs> yeah, I, I've learned to deal with it um, in some ways because I've refed in – um, intramural and college club tournaments um, across the region. And it's very intimidating to start, but you just kind of have to just stand your ground and be ready to back yourself up and defend your case, which kind of transitions to a lot about writing and publishing. You have to believe in what you call or believe in what you write and stand on that. Yeah. Well, I, I have to say before we move to the next segment that I, I admire that and respect you for going into that, Andrew, because it seems like you do have a passion for it. But also, like you said, that's the kind of feel like when we talk to our friend Mike, who's an official, it's not really something that I would want to do myself. But, not, but I think you kind of have to you have to have a certain level of focus for it. You have to have, uh, you know, that passion like I talked about, but you also kind of have to be a little bit thick skinned at some time, too. You can't let other people because it's like Mike had made the saying that you make a call, you're going to piss one side off and make one side happy that's just kind of the way you're going to look at it whether it's the right call or not but anyways we're going to go to segment two now which is getting to know andrew more which he's already kind of filled us in a little bit of himself but i'm going to turn it over to kathy to get things started thanks ben all right andrew let's start with the foundation of your story can you tell us where you were born and raised and then also talk about your hometown as well so starting off i was born in indianapolis um in the great year of 1999 so i saw about the entire year of that as a, as a newborn. So that was really interesting to see from what I can remember. Um, and then growing up, I lived in Putnam County, Indiana. It's just about an hour west of a uh, hour west of Indianapolis, hop on 36, take that uh, US 36, take that all the way to uh, Putnam County and a little town called Bainbridge, Indiana. It's where I, I lived primarily from um, seventh grade to when I graduated high school. Uh, pretty much rural Indiana, just like a lot of the state. Um, I graduated at North from North Putnam High School, surrounded by a bunch of cornfields. We had one stoplight, uh, two gas stations, a family dollar, Dollar General, and an, uh, a little dairy ice cream shop. So very small town, Indiana. Had some basketball courts. So just like much of uh, the small towns of in the state of Indiana, sports was always um, big in that area. Football was always big every Friday night. Um, brings the whole community in and then basketball as well. So sports was a really big part of gr um, myself growing up. And I really am proud of to say where I came from. It's a really good community. And I am very glad to see that it's still doing well. Yeah, it's really interesting, Andrew. It made me think of our hometown, too. It's uh, it's really small, too. Uh, it, it might have a few more little other destinations there, but it kind of reminds me of that. I'm just imagining it's, it's got to get pretty crazy there on a Friday or Saturday night <laughs> within that town. That stoplight just turns to, to yellow the whole time. <laughs> but anyways, oh, yes. uh, yeah, but anyways, Andrew, it, it's pretty cool, too. Just another comment I had on this. I think, uh, I don't know why, uh, Kathy Rob, but it kind of ran through my head when he was talking about you know, how people would just be so invested in football or basketball that night that it would basically almost shut the town down because it, everybody would be so involved in that. So it, it really brings that kind of warm uh, Indiana feeling to you whenever you know you have that much of an involvement within your community. But great stuff, Andrew. Let's, let's now kind of shift a little bit more over towards your family. If you could tell us a little bit about your mother and your father and also any siblings that you had yeah so starting off mom and dad i love them to death they're great people um lived most of my life with my mom um, um it was divorced parents and my dad lives in indy and i saw him uh all the time growing up and had a great relationship with both of them i have an older sister who's um, about five years older than me or so and proud to say i'm an uncle um I'm an uncle to my nephew, Hayden, who's five years old. Um, uh, he just turned five this month. So I uh, haven't gotten to see him yet or the family in a long time. 
um, because just dealing with everything on campus and COVID related stuff, just trying to keep everybody safe and healthy, but hopefully holidays coming around, get back home soon. Um, just very, uh, very excited and proud of, uh, uh, my family. Andrew, that's great. And you know, we're happy that you're really close to your family. I'm sure you'd be a, a excellent uncle Dan. Now, just out of curiosity, when did your interest in actually covering sports begin? So I'm going to have to rewind a bit. So I've always had a passion for sports growing up. I would play football, play basketball. I threw shot and discus in high school. Um, sports was kind of what made me, what kind of made me fit in in high school. Um, I used that growing up and used the advantage I had um, athletically and had a, um, had a great time playing. Uh, high school sports was very big on building a community, building a community around you um, and great people who to this day, I still keep in contact with my teammates. Um, and then that transitioned into college kind of later because my freshman year, I took a very traditional IU route and went into business. And I lasted about two months in trying to get into the Kelly school. I took a midterm in accounting a 100 and then kind of dropped out of business after that. And then switched to sports media aspect in which my best friend to this day, I told him that I dropped out of media. He was like, you should have did that in the first place. You should have applied for sports media. So that was a really interesting story to hear from him. Um, and then starting off my sophomore year of college, I was fully in the media school. And I was hesitant on what I wanted to do because I was being on just trying to earn a lot of money working on campus and then keeping up with schooling. But it wasn't until junior year where I got really involved with covering sports. And that's what uh, obviously led me to NEA HQ. I'm very big on sports, like I've mentioned, and the stories that come within it. Um, I feel like a lot of times there's a lot of athletes out there whose story's not been told yet. And there's always going to be a great story out there no matter um, what. So it's always good to see there's a different side to athletes more than just what you see on a basketball court that's or awesome. a football court, et cetera. Yeah. That's football awesome. field. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say a 100? I totally get that. That was one of the worst classes and I, I don't even know how I passed. So um, I, I totally, totally get that. And it seems like it worked out really well for you because you got to go into a really, really cool major afterwards. But um, you know, you kind of alluded to this a little bit about how you started to find Indiana HQ. Can you go into more detail about that, about how you came across it and how that started for you? Yeah. So summer of my junior year, um, I was reached out by our owner, Rob, Rob Jang, and he reached out looking for interns. And I didn't know much about the site at all. Um, I usually just followed a lot of the, um, the ESPNs, the Big Ten networks, like those types of media outlets. But I didn't know much about Indiana HQ when they reached out to me. And they told me they were looking for interns. And then um, I had a very nice and long conversation with um, Rob about the site and what duties I'd be taking on, what kind of stories I've written in the past um, as a, as having it in my major. And then after the great conversation, we, uh, I sent him some stories that I written for class projects. And then I joined on um, June, uh, June, July of 2019. Um, and then started with some coverage of football. Um, at first I wasn't big on writing. I was more on big on the sports casting because that's kind of what my concentration is at the media school but we transitioned into getting myself in a more writing form and then getting involved with podcasting with Noah Matt and Nathan at the site so that was really fun to see and shout out to Noah because he really got me involved with the podcast early we have a, se a second segment called the Hoosier um, Hoosier sound off which is basically just kind of like a three-minute rundown of things that happened and I use sports in the past week and we tried to uh, hit on a lot of the smaller sports that don't get a lot of coverage. So I was given the lead on that and I was able to come up, uh, do, work on this uh, script each week. And then I was in uh, my apartment um, with my mic, um, recording it, editing it and posting it out there. So that was really good to see. And then once football season got rolling, um, I was excited to cover my very first game at um, the Ball State game at Lucas Oil. That was really interesting to see being a big-time press box, and that was very exciting. And then I, um, throughout the football season, I 
did a little bit of both. I worked on the podcasting and covering as well, but Nathan and I were kind of like the lead in football season and we kind of just swapped duty. So sometimes he would report, I would work photography on, on the field with our camera. And that was a very um, interesting side because I never had to work a camera before. So that was very fun to learn. And then transitioning to basketball, I kept kind of kept the balance going as well all the way through. Got to work the final, uh, basically final full college basketball game of the season on the day the world shut down uh, with the <laughs> IU Nebraska game of the Big Ten tourney. So that was an interesting experience. And then I, um, after that, we had the whole shutdown. And now this year, I'm kind of looking forward in, to being one of the primary reporters for football season as we get rolling this weekend and then keeping that going into basketball. Well, Andrew, really we appreciate stuff. that background. Oh, sorry, Ben, go ahead. No, I was going to ask an organic question real quick, just because just I, I, I do consider myself fortunate. Now, Kathy and Robbie, I think both have gotten familiar with Noah and Matt because they've been on the show. But I've also had the pleasure of seeing uh, Nathan also on Hoosier Sound. I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting him in person. So, of course, I've had the pleasure of meeting Andrew, too. So, Andrew, I, I kind of thought of an organic question with that, like, it's kind of a two-part question, really. Like, one, did you know, like, Noah, Matt, and, and Nathan going in to join them? Or did you guys, like, get to know each other after you joined in the NHQ? And, like, how has that relationship been for you? Because it feels like you guys kind of built, like, this camaraderie, kind of like what me, Robbie, and Kathy have done. So, starting off, I basically jumped full in into the water. Um, I did not know anybody at the site, including Noah, Nathan, and Matt at the podcast. But they were all really welcoming the entire um, the entire staff at the site and the podcast. Very welcoming. They understood what kind of like the strengths and weaknesses I had going in. And then they were very accommodating to like getting myself involved with what kind of like what their standards were and how they did their day to day operations. So then transitioning into your second question, the the four of us, Matt, Nathan, uh, Noah and I, we all still stay in touch, um, good communication. I know Noah's been kind of busy with some of his professional life. And so we've had Matt and Nathan on the podcast lately, and I've been trying to get in as much as possible with football content. And so hopefully as football season gets going, we can just keep building a, a stronger relationship with everybody and um, hopefully it just keeps going and we can uh, keep creating good con uh, keep creating great con content for the site and the podcast. Well, Andrew, I think that we have no doubt that you guys will continue to pump out excellent content. Uh, and Ben had a great follow-up question. I'm sorry that I interrupted on that part, Ben. But Andrew, I think that you know you, you gave us a lot of really good insight, a little bit into like your experience with the networking, not just like you were mentioning the new people that you're around. But I think another moral of the story that people could take away, and this will build into or segue into our next question really well, is Andrew, I like how you shared that you ended up doing certain things that you didn't expect you would do, getting into podcasting, doing photography. It's kind of like, you know, you have this main focus of what you want to do on the media side, but you're also picking up experiences in these other areas that could still be very valuable for your career and your experiences and your background. So Andrew, considering all of that, considering the people that you've met along this way in school and through Indian HQ, the new experiences with technology or the outlets on media, you know, in your journey so far covering athletics, what have you learned about yourself in this journey? It's a question I've always liked asking my former students and friends of mine as we've gotten older. It's a great thing to look back on in kind of a scope of what you've been through. And just what have you really learned about yourself while doing that journey? Yeah, great question. First off, obviously, all the technical sides of it, um, learning how to shoot with a camera, learning how to write, all those stuff you pick up um, as you get going with more experience. But when it comes to myself, I think the biggest thing I've learned so far is believe in what you publish. Uh, people are always going to say something, no matter what you put out, whether it's positive or negative, it's kind of just how the world works. And for an example of that, when I wrote, I was when I was at the IU Nebraska game at the Big Ten tournament, I had, my story was basically about, yes, IU won the game in dominant fashion, but because of COVID-19, their tournament status was still up in question. And that was an honest fact. And people were just commenting away in the, in the comment section. And, and I just, I just had to basically realize, yeah, people are going to do that no matter what. Cause a lot of times people don't want to hear what um, people don't want to hear what the truth is, or they don't, they don't want to hear what they don't want to hear. And that's kind of the gist of it, but believe in what you publish is huge for me. Um, so far, like my early years in college, I was, 
had trouble kind of getting confidence of what I was working on. I didn't really have a whole lot of confidence trying to figure out what I was going to do um, professionally um, after college. And so, kind of sophomore year, I was just like, what am I going to do? Looking around, I didn't have the confidence to try to get involved with a side or, or anything like that. And I kind of felt down on myself because looking at what I wanted to do, I didn't have, I didn't have it. I didn't think I could do it. So, but Rob and them reached out to me and then it's been great so far. And I also have another job on campus that's not sports media related, but I've gone really far into that progress and all the relationships I built, whether it's sports media or my job on campus, it's very huge. And those relationships are going to be key as I keep going, um, whatever professional route I take, because I'm going to be looking to go to grad school, hopefully in the future. So very, um, very humbling on that part. And I have to kind of realize now that you always got to be, uh, believe in what you do. And if you have a truly, uh, passion for a fact or a story or something like that, stick to it. Don't let the, um, don't let the comments change your mindset on it. Oh, wow, Andrew. We were just talking in the chat about how profound and smart you are. Um, we love the quote that says, you know, people don't want to hear what they don't want to hear. Um, I feel like that's so relevant for, for today's age and, and kind of news cycle. And another thing you said was believe in what you published. I feel like that should just be the general rule for everything. And it, it's crazy how probably a lot of people don't follow that as much as we think they they would. So um, very profound. And just thank you for sharing. Um, I had an organic question here just because I think it's so cool that even still as a student in college, you've had the exposure to doing podcasting, broadcasting, photography, and writing, and I'm sure a lot of other things. Is there an area that sticks out to you that you kind of lean more towards, or do you enjoy having that broad variety? I do like having the broad variety, but to answer your question, I've kind of found myself more enjoying the writing aspect because when I was in kind of a sophomore and junior early on, I was taking classes where I do camera work in the studio and being put on camera right away. That's very daunting, especially if you're not getting a script and you have to either ad lib it or create one within like five or 10 minutes of your quote unquote show. But that was very um, interesting to kind of get over that hump going into my senior year. Um, I'm in a sports casting class right now on campus and I felt like my confidence has really shifted in that regard. So that's really good to see balancing that aspect. But writing, I really enjoyed it because I kind of get to go at my own pace. Yes, I have deadlines and stuff to make, but I'm e I'm easily able to just sit down and just type what I'm thinking, I draft it up, and then kind of realize what, look at all the transcripts, uh, watch back some of the tape, and just realize what's the biggest thing that I think is out there. Like for an example, at Monday's uh, Tom Allen press conference, he used the quote, being close is no longer acceptable um, when it comes to competing as top 25 teams. And that was the story I put out this week, how IU football has been so close to beating those top 25 teams. And now Tom Allen has the mindset, okay, that's no longer the option for this team. So that's the, that's the route I ran with for the story this week. And I am really press just um myself just being able to um kind of climb that climb that ladder into bu building that confidence in my writing to hopefully that it kind of can it can uh, bounce off to those other aspects of um sports media as well well andrew i think that's a great angle to take in a, in a strategic way but also just it makes sense as we've all seen and supported this program the last few years under Tom Allen, it's like this should be the normal trajectory, right? Any company in business, I'm sure Kathy would agree with, is that as you hit certain obstacles or benchmarks that you've wanted to hit, your expectations should keep going higher. We shouldn't just be satisfied with that. And I think that's a, that's a healthy goal for that team to have. Um, Andrew, if you don't mind, I think this is a great chance to segue because of your last topic into Indiana football and talking a little bit about Indiana women's and men's basketball. Starting off with football, um, Andrew, kind of like a little bit of a, a, a sort of a, you know, this kind of reminds me of one of those ESPN articles, Andrew, where they get several analysts or 
um, columnists to give their same point of view on certain topics. So uh, you kind of get what I mean here in a minute as you looked at the agenda. So it says the football season starts this coming weekend. As we've all heard, Kathy's exuberant excitement for the Indiana Hoosiers as they face up against the tough test right out of this gate. Could you answer these two scenarios for us, Andrew, very similar to like we see ESPN columnists do, uh, and finish these two types of sentences. We'll do the first one at the beginning. So I'll, I'll do this one and kind of separate them and see how it goes. So you just finished the sentence, Andrew. I've, I'm assuming that you've had a little bit of time to look at this. Um, I'll read but the first part of the sentence and you just kind of elaborate on it. And when you're done, I'll go to the other half of the side that we hope is very little. But the, let's go to start with the positive. Indiana will win this game, the first game of the year, because why? The offense. I think the time to shine for this offense is this year. Michael Penix coming back after injury last year. I really think he has the opportunity to take the reins and really show what he can do. Um, we've seen it in glimpses and the Penn State game a couple years ago. He had a couple bright moments. And then last year he had a good game against Ball State. Um, almost helped IU beat Michigan State on the road in East Lansing. So Penix being able to take the reins on this offense this year and use his weapons he's got around him. He's got uh, three of his top returning wide receivers and a Watt failure, Ty Freifogel, and Peyton Hendershot. So you're going to have all those weapons around you. You also have Miles Marshall, David Ellis are also some names in there who can be thrown in this year. And then going off of that is going to have to be the running game is going to have to be able to support Penix um, with Stevie Scott, Samson James. And a lot of that's going to fall on the offensive line this year, I think. Um, when you look at what um, – Took, transpired over the off season, you had three, three of your top linemen leave um, for graduation or transferring to another pro program like uh, Coy Cronk did. And looking at the offensive line, they're going to be going against a very talented defensive front. You're going to have Matthew Bedford moving over to the right tackle um, in his sophomore season to protect Michael Penix's blind side. And you have Caleb Jones shifting over to the left and up, up at center. You have Harry Kreider uh, who seems to, from what I've been hearing around uh, some of his peers, very quality leadership. He was um, named a captain this year. Uh, so he's got some experience from playing last year. And then you have kind of your guard spots on the interiors where the real question is of this offense, I think, because there's a lot of names that we haven't really heard as much. You have Mike, uh, Mike Caddick. Hopefully I said his last name, right. I'm sorry. Uh, Dylan Powell is another name as well. The graduate transfer from Stanford. So, you're going to have different pieces in the interior and they're going to be have to be able to hold their own because you don't have a ball state. You don't have a UConn or Western Kentucky to begin your season and you're getting thrown in against a number eight team in the nation. So this offense is going to be have to be able to go um, not step by step with Penn state. Cause I think that Penn state might have a dip in their offense. It just depends on what's going to happen with some of their personnel but I think this offense, this, um, this game has to be able to go toe to toe. Can't have any three and outs, multiple three and outs can't happen. We, we know Penix is going to be, um, have good accuracy. He's uh, very sharp with his passes, gets the ball out quickly, can throw the deep ball, has a high completion percentage. So that's going to be really interesting to see if he can really take that next step and show everybody what he came to IU to do and to lead this offense to win these types of games. You no, know, Andrew, I think the analysis that you gave and your your inference on what we hope to see out of this team and the introduction is, is kind of very, very positive, and it really gives us excitement for the year. You know, looking back, it goes back to that dark day whenever the, the college basketball season was canceled, but earlier this fall when the Big Ten made that initial decision to cancel the season, I think that's what made it even more heartbreaking because, Andrew, we, we saw some of the – so, I mean, yours is way detailed than I was even looking at it, but I think we can all four agree we were excited about the potential of this year and having, I think we were even in the top 25 preseason rank. I think what were we 25? Is that in, what IU was at the beginning? I'm not sure. I don't remember the exact number, but there was Maybe rumors more. about being close yeah. in that area. Well, either way, to be <laughs> even considered close in that area was pretty big. Go ahead, Ben. Well, I was about to say, I think there, I think it was kind of thrown around, but I don't know if that ever became part okay. of the official poll, but I think it was like a, uh, one of the higher ups, we don't call it like mock polls, but they were definitely in the mix there towards the yeah. top 20, the latter end of the top 25. It's just funny because like you see the poll and the poll is so messed up this year. You got teams like Penn State that haven't even played a game and then they're like ranked nine and you got teams that have played three or four games. It just doesn't even make any sense, but 
Uh, over to the next part here. Again, we hope that this doesn't happen, obviously, this weekend. So finishing this sentence, Andrew, Indiana will lose this game if – Timely miscues and big plays. So what's killed IU for years is the timely miscues um, and giving up those big plays at the wrong time. For an example, the Penn State game last year, IU lost by seven and honestly should have won that game. I don't don't necessarily want to throw that out there, but they had a really good shot to win that game, even with all the miscues they had. You had the early on the a couple fumbles, one on special teams and then one um, uh, Watt failure had the fumble on offense and then had the punt that may or may not have touched him. It was very hard to see based off the review, but it was a rule that he touched it. And then you had the defense kind of giving up those big plays at the wrong time. Um, Sean Clifford, very, very good quarterback, has, has the chance to really excel again this year. Uh, very good with the ball and has the ability to scramble is, I think, what separates him very well. He broke off two big runs um, against IU last year, had 55 rushing yards and those two timely touchdowns. And those plays like that can't happen for IU um, in this game on that defense. This defense has been big on uh, – is kind of big on getting their experience going because when you look at it, they have so much coming back on both sides of the ball relatively. And I think this defense takes another step. It's going to have to limit those big plays opportunities. And that gets um, basically said year after year. You can't have those costly plays. And looking at Penn State's offense, um, they have a brand-new offensive coordinator um, who's coming over from Minnesota who had the third highest uh, uh, offense in program history last year for the Golden Gophers. And so there's going to be kind of um, kind of wondering about what's going to happen with that offense. But uh, defense coordinator Kane Womack was basically pretty clear on good offense coordinators get their personnel in the right spots no matter what. And Sean Clifford – uh, leading the charge on that offense is going to be very key in this game. And then also the status of uh, running back Journey Brown. He had over 800 yards last season and 100 yards in the IU game itself himself. And it was reported on Monday, uh, late Monday, early Tuesday by 24-7 Sports that he uh, may not be – may not play at all this season because of an undisclosed injury. And so his status is up in the air right now, so it's going to be very key on – um, who they have going for them on this offense, and can IU actually pull through, play when it counts, all four quarters, and not have those big plays uh, go against them? Yeah, especially, Andrew, whenever you were talking about Tom Allen's expectations for this program now, you cannot be making those mistakes that you listed out. Now, Andrew, this is a, another organic question that we were not, we didn't have on the original agenda. And I'm sure this is something you've been asked by quite a bit of people, whether it's been on the air or off the air. So I don't mean to dwell on something like an aesthetic nature like this, but we know in college sports, don't get me wrong, I'm super excited the fact that they're even having games this year. But we, we, I think we can all agree that the fans add some type of substance to games and basketball and football just change the nature of just how the whole thing feels. Um, Andrew, not, not really a focus on maybe on basketball. Or maybe we can hit basketball and football together here on this same particular question. We've heard of home court advantage and maybe even home field advantage. Do you predict from your angle and perspective of this Indiana team, the fact that there will not be any fans allowed in the stadium, do you think that will work in Indiana's advantage overall through the season? Or do you think that will work against Indiana's advantage? Well, obviously for Indiana going on the road is going to be key because they have to go to Michigan State, Ohio State. You're not going to have jam-packed stadium screaming the entire time. There's probably going to be some artificial crowd noise like a lot of the other games have been doing this year. And for IU personally, like, I think it's going to be a blessing for them that they don't have to worry about going into a jam-packed arena with 100,000 fans screaming at them. And then on the home side, a lot of times Memorial Stadium doesn't get sold out. And a lot of times, a lot of the noise in that is from the visiting fans. Um, I remember seeing a lot of that. You'll see if you play, if they played Ohio State or Penn State at home, a lot of times the couple corner sections are filled, especially when I use heading in towards a certain end zone. So that's going to be very interesting this year, how the whole fan aspect is going to work. And obviously as audiences and media members, we, we love as sport fans um, seeing how fans impact the game. Personally, when I was at the IU Penn State game last year, I was on the field working, for photogra uh, working photography for that game. 
that was probably the best experience I've ever um, had when it comes to being at a football game besides like playing in high school. But it was so interesting to be at a type of stadium like that and see how that, how the fans of Penn state really impacted that game. And so it's going to be very interesting this year, how it's going to work out. Um, hopefully going into basketball, things maybe get better, but um, who knows right now. Yeah, no, you make a good point, Andrew. I've heard that like in professional football so far, so many of the teams have to switch up their code names and whatnot every week because people can hear them like on TV and, and around the field and, and you start to learn what the various plays are. So um, while I think it could be an advantage, um, there's stuff like that as well. Um, kind of alongside that, I want to switch the perspective to you working the game in this current environment. Have you gotten any guidelines from Indiana University on, um, you know, whether I, I've heard stories about like sideline reporters not being allowed to be on the sidelines, like they actually have to be up on the stand. So it's harder to, to get certain people. It sounds like you're doing some work with photography or whatnot. Have you gotten any guidelines about that, how that might impact your specific work for games? So not to kind of leave you hanging there, Kathy, but not a whole lot has gone on really there's still a lot to be determined even as they enter the first week. Uh, that is a really good question has been put in the chat, but as there's still a lot of unknowns and I don't know how much I can really give out right now um, based off um, kind of the direction of IU itself. Yeah. Sorry about yeah, that. that. No, it's okay. Like I said, Andrew, you're being completely honest about that. And I don't think that Kathy or any of us would expect any different from you from three fans that are also really excited and just curious about the media aspect. It's cool to know what your limitations are, what, what information you're actually given or what information is maybe not really given to you. It just gives us a little bit more. It's weird because the, the lack of clarity that you're experiencing gives us more clarity as far as understanding what you all go through from the media side. Now kind of going into a question, Andrew, uh, for you, but Ben shared his excitement with me and, and Kathy this last week. And I, I'm just curious if you had a similar excitement. So over to Ben's basketball, you and Ben were both part of the virtual media day festivities. What was that like from your perspective? And what were some of the takeaways that you had from Archie and the players? Well, having the first day media uh, or the virtual media day, it was obviously very different compared to last year because that was my first ever IU year covering IU basketball and that was in person. So that was really fun to see. But this year now it was me, it was all virtual and shout out to um, uh, IU athletics for making that happen. Um, I thought it ran, uh, went really well via zoom and based off what I saw and heard from uh, Archie Miller and all the players, I think there's a lot of confidence in this team this year. Uh, based off the players and stuff, every year IU fans obviously get very confident about every single basketball season, and then you have a couple bumps in the road, and then the idea of it totally changes. But I think this year the chemistry looks to be really good. You have a lot returning. Um, you did lose um, one of your best shooters in Devontae Green, um, and then you also lost a key piece in Deron Davis. Um, but I think there's so much returning with this team this year. You have a lot of guys probably going to be stepping up into new roles that haven't been there, like a race Thompson, Al Durham's going to be probably, well, was actually their best shooter, three point shooter by percentage last year, but he's going to be probably more elevated on scoring this year. Rob Finnis, he said he's looking to be much more aggressive. And then you have Trey Jackson Davis, who is probably looking to take the next step in his attack and play like an all, like everybody expects him to play like an all American. And then you have the piece of the freshman class coming in with uh, Christian Lander, Anthony Leal, Trey Galloway. So there's going to be a lot of pieces this year that can hopefully blend well together. Um, I was very keen on what uh, Archie Miller had to say, kind of about what their offensive flow was going to be this year. Um, and Ben, you were there as well. More perimeter play, utilizing the versatility um, with kind of all every position using the speed, spacing the floor, freedom to move and play together more is going to be big. Lineups, lineup wise, it's going to be interesting how it goes this year, because I think you can put in multiple guys. You, they can look to go small ball, which I think is, could really help this team in the long run. And then you also have Joey Brunk back who can uh, give some guys some breaks. If they have to go do a game where they have to go Brunk at the five TJD at the four or Trey Jackson Davis at the four, 
that can work. And then you have other games where you might go small ball, kind of run run against the teams. I know Archie Miller is very big on pace with this team. He's very animated on the sidelines trying to get guys to get the ball going in transition. So I'm very excited to see this team this year. Obviously, the way things ended last year, I thought they would have been a tournament team. Um, I know that was still up in the air as the season kind of ended abruptly. Um, but with the way the schedule is going to work this year and everything that's up in the air, to have a team that's kind of built together chem- uh, with chemistry and togetherness and they care for each other, um, I think it's going to really help this team in the long run as they look to hopefully make it to the tournament this year for the first time in a long time, it feels like. And we are so excited to see it. And, you know, for my next question, you touched upon um, a lot of this. So I'll switch it up a little bit. I guess, um, is there anyone on the team currently that you think has a chance to kind of be that breakout person that no one was expecting? So when it comes to breakout person that no one's expecting, I think it's going to be Race Thompson this year. He showed glimpses of what he could do last season. Um, hustles all the time, plays hard while he's on the floor. Very big on rebounding inside. He single-handedly, I think, kept IU in the Purdue game at West Lafayette last year, battling inside against um, the post players that they had. And going off of that, I think things that's going to have to – he's going to have to elevate this year is his defending, especially in the pick and roll. A lot of times there was a lot of breakdowns defensively in the pick and roll last year. But I really like with him, it's going to be an interesting dynamic with him and Trey Jackson Davis – um, ben, you remember um, Trey Jackson Davis talked about kind of him and um, T- Race Thompson being on the court together, kind of like at the four and the five. And that's going to be really in- interesting to see how that's going to work because obviously if Race um, Race and Trace have also been working on their outside shooting is what, it, is what we're hearing and what we're seeing via video. So it's going to be interesting. If you have Race on the floor, that gives you probably another four spot to um, look around uh, be able to space the floor, get Trey Jackson Davis open on the inside, kind of give him room to go and then drive and kick lanes for other players as well. And I'm also going to throw out, I know we talked about race quite a bit, but Jerome Hunter obviously is a, a very key player to break out this season, just because I thought his confidence got a lot better as the season ended. Um, he shot, shot and made 16 of his 19 three point field goals in the final 10 games. He made only missed three. So that was really interesting to see as the season got going, he was able to build that confidence. He's going to be a very versatile player as um, Archie, want, Archie wants to build the system and kind of see how the team plays this year. Jerome Hunter is also going to be a very key um, piece this season as he gets going, kind of get a full season um, again in him. You know, looking ahead, I know that some of the preseason – oh, go ahead, Kathy. <laughs> Oh, no, I just wanted to ask a quick follow up. Um, I've just from what I've been reading and the rumblings I've heard, it seems like people are expecting um, IU to kind of be at that number seven or eight spot in the Big Ten. Do you agree with that? Yeah, with all the unknowns this year, kind of middle of the pack, I'm going to say they're probably going to be an upper half Big Ten team this year. I just think it's going to be another competitive year in the Big Ten. Um, you have all the preseason talks about Iowa and Luca Garza. You have Illinois with Ayo DeSumo and Kofi Coburn coming uh, coming back, Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Um, there's going to be a lot of competitiveness. Purdue is always going to be really good with Matt Painter at the helm. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see how it goes this year. Um, I think it's going to be another grueling task for IU, even with all the COVID circumstances on top of it. So – it's going to be fun to watch. Obviously, anytime uh, we have Big Ten college basketball, it's always going to be fun to watch. Um, so I'm very looking forward to seeing that. I think it is going to be a grind all the way through March or whenever the NCAA tournament is. Well, I know that we saw that I think some of the preseason expectations is that Indiana would be like number eight or nine. But then I got to thinking because I saw the – the parody in the league is expected to be like it was last year. So I'm like, well, what really is eighth or ninth place? I mean, because look at last year, the differences between first place and, and like sixth or seventh, it just really wasn't that much. And Andrew, I know with a lot of the new players coming in, there's a lot of uncertainty about chemistry that anybody that has an impartial view of Indiana is going to look at. But my question goes along the full schedule as looking at that from a scope. 
Uh, we know the full schedule is not set in stone, but Andrew, do you envision Indiana having a tougher road this season to get to the NCAA tournament, or do you think it's going to be a, a smoother road? Oh, hands down, I think it's going to be a tougher road. Um, it's going to be kind of just like football this year. You don't have those non-conference games, um, at least a whole lot for basketball's case. You're going to have probably three games with the Maui or Asheville, North Carolina Invitational. Um, that's what some people at Assembly Call were calling it. Um, you have three games with that. You're going to have the Big Ten ACC Challenge, most likely. That's a contract-obligated um, series. And then you have the Crossroads Classic, which um, Archie Miller said, to his knowledge, it's still on. Um, IU would be playing Butler this year in that game. And then the Gavit games are still up in the air. So based off that, you have – do some quick math – five to six con- non-conference games. I don't know if they'll add any more. I really doubt it just because the Big Ten is probably going to be key on just getting conference only um, like they did with football. So I think it's going to be a very much tougher route because when looking at it, IU was 20-12 and 12 last season, 19-12 and 12 in the regular season. They were 10-1 and 1 in non-conference games. And their conference record was 9-11. and 11. So obviously mo- the majority of their wins came from the non-conference slate. Um, when you look at the hot start they got onto last year, was all non-conference games. So that's going to be very key this year. And depending on what the Big Ten, whenever they release the schedule, depending on who, how the, how IU plays, whether if they play at a home and away versus Michigan State or um, a home and away against Illinois, it's going to be very interesting to see how that um, – how Archie Miller and IU kind of transitions this team into facing a – it's going to be another daunting Big Ten schedule. You know, since you brought up the – before we go into the women's basketball part, I wanted to ask you, Andrew, uh, do you think you, you – you know, with the Maui the Invitational being moved to North Carolina or whatever, do you think they should still wear the Hawaiian shirts? I think that should still be the necessary uh, attire they should have to wear there. What do you think? Oh, yeah, keep it going. Keep their tradition wearing the Hawaiian shirts. Make it all Hawaiian theme. Just because it's Asheville, um, it is kind of near coast. I don't know my geography that well, but North Carolina is near an ocean. So, hey, keep it going. There you go. Yeah. Well, uh, like I said, we're going to move on to women's basketball a little bit again. I don't know how much uh, of that uh, you cover as much on your end, Andrew, but again, we're kind of on the basketball side, but it kind of grazes the surface of it anyways. But it goes something like this, that we, you know, we continue, the, the women's basketball, they continue to build and sustain success on their side, and much in part to how that organization is built by Coach Moore. And, you know, from your opinion, what have you seen from Coach and this team that makes them such a tough opponent game in and game out? I think what's been big about the women's basketball program is the way they've been able to improve year in and year out. Um, under Coach Morin, entering her seventh season, they've averaged around 21 wins per season through the last six years. They've gotten to an NIT championship in 2018, if I get that year right. And then, obviously, this year, they're 17th in the early season, top 25 for the Women's College Basketball League. You have would have made the tournament last year for sure. Um, I believe they had a 24 and eight record kind of before the shutdown happened. So uh, all in all, I really think they have a really good team going this year. And Terry Morin's able to build a culture that is able to build a culture that gets women's basketball in the forefront at Indiana university. Um, Cause they are a really good team. And I think a lot more um, light needs to be shined upon their way um, because it's a very good basketball team. I did actually get to be at the um, one of the games last year. One of my classes, we got to cover um, the IU women's basketball game against Wisconsin, and they came back from a 16-point le- deficit and won the game right after Kobe Kobe Bryant's um, tragic death. And the way that game ended, there was so much energy in Assembly Hall during the women's game. You saw the buy-in from the players, the passion getting coming back from a 16-point deficit um, obviously they're going to have a lot of key pieces this year. So I really think that this program is in a right direction and can really contend this year in the big 10. I think that's what makes this team so exciting to follow as well. It, it seems like between the football program and the women's basketball program, and we're seeing it a little bit with the men's is that there's slowly more of that positive growth, but the women's has been really, really exciting. i um, looking into this next season of the winter sports athletes, Andrew, um, We've seen that 
we've now seen that there's been granted an extra year of eligibility to play. How significant do you think this news is and how could this possibly change, change the landscape of college sports going into the next year? So first off, I think it's huge for everyone involved. You kind of have this chance. You get this whole year back for fall and winter sports. Sticking with women's basketball for a second, excuse me. Uh, Allie Patberg is already in her sixth year of eligibility and she gets a whole nother year back if she chooses to do so with that. Jerome Hunter, Race Thompson already used their red shirt. Um, so they're going to get a whole nother year back as well. But I think the biggest impact may be on recruiting um, looking into next season because players, no matter what sport it is, may lose a spot if someone wants to come back for the sport that they're in. So, for example, I'm not naming any IU sports particular say a uh, basketball player decides to go pro or not come or decides to come back or same thing with football. You have these uh, for, uh, incoming freshmen or high school seniors that um, may have already had conversation with coaches about playing, uh, getting a chance to be at the school, and they might have already had a spot there before this new rule came out. So there's too many still unknowns, I think, to be determined with this. So it's going to have to deal with like scholarship numbers and all of that. So, but it's still going to be a big impact no matter what asset of the, of the college sports it is a part of. Andrew, thanks so much for your perspective on that. And I'm um, shifting gears a little bit. So excluding the high revenue sports that, you know, people are very familiar with. Do you have a particular IU athletic program that you would like to plug and you find fascinating and want to recommend to the audience that they give some time to, um, to see in person or watch on TV online? Yeah. So I'm going to give a shout out to women's basketball. Once again, um, I really think a lot of people should invest in that program, but also giving um, some light on some other programs, obviously with the way the world kind of shut down and fall sports right now, Soccer happening in the spring. The spring could be very big for Indiana University Athletics. You have soccer. Um, looks like getting for IU going to be probably in the springtime. Um, then you have baseball and softball as well, who had their seasons end abruptly. So every sport's going to be good to get kind of fans more involved and see. But those spring spring sports in particular, I really think are going to be very um, big this year because they're gone a y entire year without them. Last year we all got to see an entire football season an almost entire basketball season. You really didn't get to see all of baseball. You didn't get to see all of uh, softball. So those sports are going to be very, um, very fun to see them get back and doing what they love. Andrew, good thoughts on, on your end there. I actually had an organic question that I wanted to ask you before we completely finish up the show. It was, it was, it was mainly back looking at the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, obviously that's still going on right now. But I, wanted, I really kind of wanted to ask you before we can finish up is that personal experience for you. Obviously, you're a student, so you probably experienced testing. I know that we had talked earlier today. You actually had the, the, the pleasure of experiencing that again <laughs> yesterday. But, I mean, like between you, like – like I'm sure that's all something you have to do for school, but also for your own well-being. Uh, I'm just kind of curious from your own take: is it as bad as what people tell me it is? Uh, it, you know, from your own experience, and also uh, on the latter end, working with Indiana HQ, like what has the challenges been with the COVID-19 pan pandemic as far as content for you guys? Has that put a little bit of a squeeze on you? Yeah, so I'll kind of take your question too far. Starting off, the whole COVID situation impacting me. It's it's obviously been very difficult trying to working in with online schooling and all that. Like I mentioned, kind of in the beginning, COVID testing, I took one today. It was rough. I had to do the whole one where it actually touches your brain almost. I, it brought tears to my eyes. I won't lie. So that was very daunting of a challenge, but got through it. Um, when it's shifting to the website itself, itself, um, when we had the shutdown, we were obviously kind of sitting there like what's going to happen. And I remember sitting in Bankers Life Fieldhouse in the press room and writing the story. And I was just like, wow, I don't believe this. And then I went to my dad's in Indy just to kind of stay there for the next game. I woke up and I saw the news and I was just like, mind blown. I'm like, what are we going to do for content? But shout out to everybody at the website. I've uh, been very keen on trying to communicate on a regular basis so that we can still look to get any news that broke, get something out for that. 
um, and then discuss the content we've been putting out this season. We're uh, we've kind of made some not really changes, more like just kind of adjustments how we're going to work this season, um, depending on what kind of content we want to push out, what needs to get out sooner, what also works, kind of some advantages and disadvantages. But keep going on that. The Hoosier sound kept going during the entire pandemic. So shout out to Matt, Nathan, and Noah for keeping that going, um, coming up with good content um, and a lot of different um, type of uh, topics and questions that we probably wouldn't get to on a regular basis if it hadn't been for COVID. And we're always going to do our best to get content out, um, and especially during these times where there's a lot of unknown in the world. Um, I think a lot of sports is what keeps a lot of people together. Um, I know this person has a big impact on my life. And I just want to get good, uh, get the best content we can out there and keep it going for audience members. Yeah, really good stuff, Andrew. Uh, just a comment on that before we head into one last little topic or a list of note for our listeners is, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't had the pleasure of taking one of those COVID tests yet. I'm not sure if Robbie and Kathy have, but it definitely made us all three kind of squeamish whenever you're mentioning that, Mark, because uh, just imagine I've had some friends at work experience that they relatively the same they've i've had some of them have nosebleeds from it at least short, temporarily after that so sounds like too much fun but i, I do want to say i have to co- give you credit for uh indian hq and what you guys have been doing over there obviously like with us being on the podcast much like who's your sound we kind of went through that same feeling ourselves i mean we had different uh, avenues we were working on branching out and covering all if i athletics we were having great fortune and luck at the time to interview the softball players and talk to them directly. So there's a lot of excitement building up to the spring sports too. And then of course, all that changing, we're like, man, what are we going to do now? So we're all kind of, I think everybody, uh, uh, the word that popped in my mind when you're talking was adapting. And I think all of us adapted about as well as we could considering the circumstances and all. But before we do the closing thoughts on here anyways, I want to give a, a little bit of information for all you fans out there, all you basketball fans, especially the those that follow recruiting, this is an important date to remember that on August 30th, uh, class of 2021, Silver Creek forward Trey Kaufman, who's highly sought after by Indiana, will be making his decision on October 30th. So that's huge news for them. He's actually being considered by Indiana, Purdue, Virginia, North Carolina, and Indiana State. Uh, I personally, in my opinion, uh, I think he's going to choose Indiana. I hope he does. But we're actually going to find out for sure on October 30th. So again, remember that date. That's for Trey Kaufman. So let's go ahead to the closing thoughts, guys. Kathy, let's kind of start things off with you. I know I don't know how well you knew Andrew before. I, I, I consider myself fortunate to know him somewhat before all this. What's this experience been like for you? It's been great. I did not know Andrew before, and I'm so glad that I know him now. Um, Andrew, you are the definition of like opposite of senioritis. Like all the things that you mentioned that you're doing, juggling school during this very challenging time, it just shows your drive and your dedication to your passion. And I think that's so great. So don't lose that. Um, it honestly blows my mind that you're still a student. And I mean that as a huge compliment to you because you're just so smart. You've learned so much. I feel like you already have an incredible network that's just going to get even bigger and better. And your career is already off to a fantastic start. So I'm really impressed with your breadth of knowledge. I really enjoy talking to you. And I just want to say, keep doing what you're doing. Thanks so much for giving us your time tonight. Well, Robbie, what about you? Anything uh, left for Andrew? Well, I mean, I just I get the impression from Andrew is like honesty. I, I really feel like Andrew, you didn't sensationalize certain things that were aspects. Of, I like your honesty about the struggles and the ups and downs of you going through a balancing this but balancing school and, and the personal life stuff too because i think in some ways it's refreshing because people that might be driving to work tomorrow that listen to this episode it's kind of relief to hear someone say i kind of get it i kind of understand what you're going through and going through that struggle so i appreciate your honesty you have such a deeper insight into these programs and from you know hearing another uh, person's perspective of what you kind of experienced in the media but also what you tangibly and intangibly gain from those experiences it, it's just paramount to hear that and it means a lot to us Andrew to be able to get that conversation with you it's also our first episode with a guest that's not one of our former classmates from our kind of other series so it's another refreshing thing just to really get back to the roots of what we've gone which is getting closer and closer to these programs and hearing the lastly is just hearing about I know your start was with a little bit more of the lesser known Indiana programs before getting into football and basketball. As we experienced this last year, 
getting a chance to bring Kathy on, getting a chance to talk to most of the softball team and part of the volleyball team. It was so amazing to, to feel this sense of attachment and pride with them. So the first time that we hopefully get to see them play if we're allowed to this year, it just gives us a lot of pride and makes us more attached to those teams. So basically, Andrew, uh, you know, a long story long, <laughs> Uh, we appreciate you being able to do this and just being yet another person that brings that excitement to us. And you just make us even more excited for this weekend and for the beginning of the basketball season. Let's just hope that Andrew brings us good luck and we can get Trey Kaufman as well and keep the, the positive Indiana recruiting by Archie. I uh, can continue to go. I could not agree more with uh, Kathy and Robbie's thoughts, Andrew. I, I, I think the best way to summarize for me is literally I, I thought you were going to be a good guest. Like I said, I think the first time that I came across you wasn't actually – I, I kind of ashamed to admit this, but it wasn't necessarily for your writing at first. It was because – Fans of Noah and, and Matt's show, I, I got to catch you on Who's Your Sound one time. I thought you were very interesting, man. You were very insightful. It was cool to hear all that. You know, then I started kind of following your work. You do a tremendous job. As far as this show, literally from start to finish, you had my interest. And I, I think you you held our audience's interest. So those that might be driving to work tomorrow or listening to it over this weekend, they're gonna be out, they're gonna find out who Andrew Root is. They're gonna be want to go check out his content, check out Indiana HQ because they are good friends of ours and they do a tremendous job. Uh, uh, we're glad to be to call them friends and part of the IU podcast family as well. But like I said, you had me from the time that you were talking about your hometown with that feelings. It kind of brought me back to that moment again, like vicariously living through you in that moment, thinking of the times we played sports and everybody that we like carpool and, and you see that long line of cars or part of the town shutting down brings back a lot of fond memories for us. And then it, it definitely gave me a newfound, uh, a, I guess you want to call it a reinforced perspe respect for you when it comes to school and balancing all that work and then doing all this, uh, you know, podcasting and coverage and stuff you're doing on the side. Uh, you definitely have my respect, man. And I can't wait to hopefully we have the opportunity to kind of work alongside each other uh, this this winter going through here as long without any kind of limitations or or any kind of regulations that they're going to do. I'm still kind of hoping that's going to be funny, like an hour before the game Saturday. They're going to be like, hey, Andrew, this is what you can't do just to let you know at the very last minute. So, but anyways, man, um, I love having you on here. Uh, this is my favorite part though, too, is just to ask you, finally, you get to be on our show. Uh, we've been thrilled to death to have you. Andrew, what's your thoughts from this? Are you glad that you're able to, to join us tonight? Oh, absolutely. I'm very happy to be a uh, part of this episode tonight. Get a chance to uh, be on your guys' show talk about kind of like my background and NEHQ itself, kind of like what the insights I've gained from the experience so far. You guys have been great, asked really great questions. Um, really hope that content keeps keep going out for both both of us in whatever ways happens um, in this sports season. Hopefully we have a full sports season to talk about um, each and every week. And you guys have been great. So I really uh, appreciate you guys having me on. It's, it's been a blast. Yeah, awesome job, Andrew. The last thing I, I will say for those that might be friends of Andrew's, especially those that are in the media field or that's going to IU or doing in that part of there, if you're friends of Andrew's or if you're, you're listeners of us and you're someone that wants to be on the show sometime, we would love to welcome you to the show to tell your story and also get to know you and what that experience has been like very much in kind of a similar boat with them, like whether you're an Indiana Daily student a person or somewhere along those lines, we'd love to hear from you. So feel free to reach out. I know I've been reaching out to several out there as well got some interest there but we haven't worked down some dates yet so it's going to be really interesting guys to to get to talk to more of these fellow media members as too or the ones that are up and coming part of that next generation eventually who knows where we'll see andrew you know five to ten years from now it, it's one of those things i might be asking for your autograph later on down the road and you you never know but i i think uh, more than anything man i'm just gonna really appreciate your time tonight i'm glad again i know you weren't feeling the greatest today it hasn't been the best of days i know but but i'm, I'm really glad that you're able to to join us tonight we're able to finish your night out on, on a highlight kind of a note but again uh, for all of our listeners out there we really appreciate you joining us tonight live or if you're listening to it the next day you know please stay tuned we'll be in contact about the next episode hopefully we'll be talking about some indiana penn state football game on the next podcast show particularly so i do want to give kathy a shout out to you real quick uh who who hail makes a return episode planning coming up it's tentative date i'll say for friday uh, her and jeff will be getting together to do the big 10 football preview so keep an eye on that or are you heartland on twitter will be definitely 
hopefully sharing that out there so people can check out Kathy and Jeff's podcast show. We, she really does an awesome job. And shout out to Jeff uh, on there as well. We've had him on the show before too. But, but anyways, I really appreciate the support tonight. And please uh, stay tuned for more content. I know on my end, I'll be debuting my first uh, uh, guest episode with Chapters on uh, tomorrow night for sure. Really looking forward to that. Thank you all for the support with them, for Robbie's podcast, and for Kathy's uh, secondary podcast as well. We really appreciate it.